What's going on, my Monster Hunter Supremes? It's your boy, the hot singles in your area. And today, I figured we would be making a tier list. So it was brought up on a Jackbox stream earlier this week that, uh, you know what? Nobody has made a tier list of the Monster Seeking Monster Jackbox Party Pack game. Uh, of all the characters and their abilities. So I figured, you know what, that space in the internet world needs to be filled. Someone needs to take on that task. And I figured, humbly, that I would be the man to do it. So today we're, li we're listing in a tier list all of the characters in Monster Seeking Monster based on their ability, how many bonus hearts their ability gets them, how consistent their strategy is, how risky they are, and uh, just generally, you know, the fun factor. So we're just going to start off right here. Uh, we're going to start in reverse order because why wouldn't we? So we're going to start right here with Invisible Person. Now, Invisible Person starts the game with two bonus hearts. The Invisible Person's score is invisible. So they appear in last place until the end of the game where their score gets revealed. So Invisible Person gets two bonus hearts right out the gate, which isn't bad. But the detrimental thing with the invisible person is they have no other way to get bonus hearts. If you're observant, you could pick out the invisible person pretty easily. The invisible person doesn't really have a strategy to go into with. Uh, I mean, the two hearts, the two bonus hearts right out the gate is pretty nice. And I guess not having to be revealed until the very end is like pretty nice. But like I said, there's nothing you can really do with the invisible person to get you any extra hearts. So for that reason, you know, with invisible person not really having any strategy to go into with just the two bonus hearts. And since invisible person is so easy to pick out, to point out and, you know, see without it even having to be revealed. Uh, I'll put it in C tier. The two bonus hearts are nice, but... uh. Beyond that, there's not too much going on for an Inviso friend over here. Next, we got the Vengeful Ghost. Vengeful Ghost starts the game with a bonus heart. If the Vengeful Ghost asks someone out and gets rejected, that player loses a heart. So Vengeful Ghost can be pretty strong. Vengeful Ghost is interesting because it's the only character in the game that actually kind of benefits from being revealed early. So if you're a Vengeful Ghost and you get revealed early, you suddenly have a lot of weight to throw around. You can make, you can kind of bully people into dating you. And even if they don't date you, they lose a heart. So it's nice that even when you don't get a date, you're at least still getting a positive benefit because you're making the other person lose a heart. So it's not a bad strategy, and like I said, once it's revealed, it only gets stronger. I'd put Vengeful Ghost in A tier. It's a pretty solid character. It could definitely help uh, win you the game for sure. So next we got the Mummy. Uh, everyone the Mummy dates becomes cursed, and then so do the players they date. At the end of the game, Mummies steal half a heart from every cursed player, but this is a big but. But if everyone has been cursed, then the curse is lifted and no hearts are stolen. So Mummy is a lot of risk reward there. It's really good that uh, not only does it get half a heart for every cursed player, it steals from those players. It steals half a heart from each cursed player. But of course the drawback is that if everybody gets cursed, and that's not a hard thing to do, you have to play really safe with the Mummy. So there's a lot of risk reward there. It's a really good ability. Stealing hearts is a big plus especially at the rate the mummy can do it because the mummy could get you you know mummy could average you like two and a half hearts stolen per game if you're able to you know kind of selectively choose your dating only date a certain number of people not try to date widespread so it's it's a good it's a good strategy you can potentially get a lot of bonus hearts out of it a maximum of i think like three bonus hearts if you get everybody except one person in the game so i would put mummy in a solid b tier the, the risk of it, of just getting no bonus hearts whatsoever if everybody is cursed, is, is pretty big. So I wouldn't be comfortable putting it in A tier, but a solid B tier is where I would put Mummy. Next, we're going on to Body Swapper. Body Swapper, on nights with a full moon, the Body Swapper swaps all of their hearts with the player they date. So Body Swapper, originally, I was going to have him actually a lot higher than I currently do. Because on first glance, the Body Swapper can really win you the game. All you got to do is on the last night, on a full moon, date the person at the top, and bing, bang, boom, you are in first place now. You've won the game. But that strategy doesn't always pay off. The Body Swapper has a lot of negatives to him that kind of make him to where he's not as good as I thought he was going to be. 
for example, it's only on full moon, so it's only on, it only happens maybe three times per game. In addition to that, uh, it can be a detriment to you to have that ability, because if you're already in first place, say you swapped with someone on the third night, and now it's the fifth night, and another full moon's shown up, if you're still in first, you have to either switch a uh, heart count with somebody in a lower position, or you just have to forgo dating entirely and possibly have someone take take over anyways because they dated that night. So Lil Peapod Man is going to be placed in B tier. There's a, there's, an, there's a real chance that he could win you a game off of his ability, but it's just inconsistent and it could be a detriment to you in a lot of situations and it's just not the best strategy to go in with. Uh, next is the robot that is only a CPU character. Uh, you can't play him if you're a player, so I'm just going to put him in D tier since he doesn't really have any effect on how players would play the game. Next we have the werewolf, spooky boy werewolf over here. Uh, so what the werewolf does is, on nights with a full moon, the werewolf receives a bonus heart for dating. The werewolf loses half a heart when they get rejected on a full moon. So werewolf has a pretty basic strategy on full moons. You just wanna make sure you get a date going. And if you do, you get a bonus heart. And there, I think there's on average like three full moons uh, per game. So that's gonna average if you manage to get all three dates You're gonna be getting two uh, or I mean sorry three bonus hearts, which isn't bad three bonus hearts is not bad but That is if you get all three dates if you do not get all three dates Then that's gonna be not good if you only get two out of the three dates The fact that you lose half a heart if you get rejected on a full moon is really detrimental because if you only get two out of the three You only get uh, a heart and a half which isn't great, that's not great. And again, since it's only on full moons, there's not too much that you can really do to get bonus hearts outside of full moons. I would put Werewolf in a C tier. I'd put him above Invisible Person because he still has a strategy he could play into, unlike the Invisible Person. But it, it's not the best strategy and uh, it's not the most consistent strategy. So I'd put him in C tier. So Mother is up next and the Mother receives a bonus heart every time their child fails to get a date. Uh, a player is randomly selected as the child. So the mother strategy is kind of weird. It's you don't want whoever your child is to get dates. So you want to kind of sabotage them as much as possible, which can work for a few rounds, but it's not like a long-term strategy. It, it can be like the first three rounds, you could probably get you a solid two, maybe three bonus hearts if you're lucky, but that's going to be it because if like they're gonna notice like oh this person is trying to mess me up they're trying to date me and then like back out and you know they'll pick up on it and they'll stop falling for your play of course if your uh, child just happens to be someone who isn't getting a lot of dates the mother can be really strong but again that's not really a consistent strategy that's uh, not something you can really rely on. I would put Mother in C tier. I would put it below Werewolf, but ahead of Inviso Bob. It kind of relies on other people and how they play, so nothing you can really control directly. So next we got the Serial Killer. The Serial Killer steals two hearts uh, from players they date the second night they date. So Serial Killer is pretty strong. Serial Killer, stealing hearts is a pretty good ability on, uh, on every character that has it. And the good thing about Serial Killer is unlike the Mummy who also steals hearts, he doesn't really have a drawback for his ability. It's just nothing but gain as long as you get uh, to date someone a second night. If you date two, pe two different people twice, right there you've got four stolen bonus hearts, which is great. That could definitely win you a game. So I'm gonna put, I'm putting Serial Killer up in A tier. His strategy is pretty simple, but it's a pretty strong and relatively consistent strategy. As long as you're able to get off at least one double date with someone, you're gonna be stealing two hearts from them, which is really great. You can just really ruin other people's chances of winning while absolutely bolstering your own. Serial Killer is a strong character, definitely an A tier, probably top of the A tier rank. Next up is Zombie. Uh, everyone the zombie dates becomes a zombie, then everyone they date turn into a zombie. Uh, if every single player has been infected at the end of the game, it's the end of the world and the original zombie is the only winner, no matter how many hearts they received. So zombie is extremely strong. Zombie is a for sure S tier because it's the only character 
with a 100% win condition if you pull it off. No matter what, if you pull off zombie strategy, you're guaranteed to win. And the fact that zombies win strategy isn't really the hardest thing to pull off. Just put some, like, he is definite S tier. There is no debate. As long as you're dating pretty widespread and date people uh, that have characters that also want them to date a lot of people, then you're pretty much guaranteed to win with the zombie. Zombie's strategy is solid. It's pretty consistent. It's not too difficult to pull off. And like I said, it's the only 100% win condition in the game. Next, we got the Glob. Uh, every time the Glob successfully dates three different players, the Glob's heart count doubles. So Glob can be really strong. Glob can be utter devastation in a game. If you pull off Glob's uh, ability once, you're at least guaranteed three bonus stars. And there's even the chance of pulling it off twice if you date a different person on each of the six rounds. So Glob is really strong. His, his ability isn't too hard to pull off and it gets you a lot of bonus hearts. Like I said, if you pull it off, you're getting at least three bonus hearts because you got to date three different people to get it off to begin with. So you'll have three hearts. I, I would consider Glob S tier. Glob is a pretty strong character. Next up is Monster Hunter. At the end of the game, the Monster Hunter receives a bonus heart for every time they dated the monster type that they've been secretly told to hunt. The real detrimental part about Monster Hunter is you have no idea who's playing the monster that you're hunting, and you won't know until they get revealed, which could happen all the way at the end of the game. So, Monster Hunter strategy is really not anything you can work with unless the monster you're hunting just happens to get revealed early there's not much you could do to play into monster hunter strategy and get you some consistent bonus hearts you're probably only going to be getting one maybe two if you're lucky uh bonus hearts from his ability so i would put monster hunter in d tier he's he's hard to pull off you can't really get any consistent thing going with monster hunter so next up is leprechaun Players who date an unrevealed leprechaun get two fake hearts. When the leprechaun's power gets revealed, the fake hearts of the player that uh, players that dated the leprechaun disappear. The leprechaun gets a bonus heart for every player that drops in the rankings. So leprechaun is pretty strong. Leprechaun is a uh, is an interesting one because leprechaun is one of the characters, one of the only characters that can actually kind of control when he gets revealed. Since he gives two fake hearts to people. Uh, if you keep consistently giving the person right behind you uh, the fake hearts, if you date the person right behind you, give them fake hearts, suddenly they go up ahead of you, and then they get revealed earlier than you do. And you just keep doing that. You could keep pushing other people ahead of you so that your ability stays intact and you don't get revealed. And then by the time you do get revealed, say at the end of the game, if you pulled off that strategy pretty well, uh, suddenly there's going to be a lot of different people who have those bone those fake hearts that you gave them that are then going to be dropping in the ranks and then there's just going to be kind of an avalanche effect of a bunch of people dropping you're going to get a ton of fake or you're going to get a ton of bonus hearts off of that so leprechaun strategy it, it's not too difficult to get like a solid three bonus hearts and even more than that if you happen to you know play really well or just get lucky uh so leprechaun i would put in a tier I would say he's right behind Serial Killer. Next we got Two-Faced Creep. The Two-Faced Creep gets a bonus heart for every time they reject a potential partner. However, they lose those bonus hearts if they fail to get uh, a date themselves. Two-Face is another one of those uh, kind of risk-reward characters, a lot like Mummy. It's pretty fun to play, but his strategy is is kind of kind of not really consistent. Especially if you get revealed with the Two-Faced Creep. Mm, your, your game's pretty much over if you get revealed early because once the two-faced creep is revealed Nobody wants to date him. They're they're basically poisonous at that point Nobody wants to touch him because everyone assumes they're gonna get duped by the two-faced The two-faced creeps ability is pretty strong and you could get some solid bonus hearts off of it If you're able to wheel and deal talk to a lot of different people However, that's difficult to pull off. You only get four messages So you're limited to how many people you can dupe per round and if you don't get the date yourself uh, when you're trying to do people, you don't get any bonus hearts. So that's that kind of sucks that his ability, his bonus hearts can be taken away like that. So I would say Two-Face is probably a, a low B tier character. He's not terrible. Like I said, his game plan is pretty solid, but he gets really hurt when he's revealed early. And the fact that he can lose his uh, bonus hearts if he doesn't get a date is kind of detrimental. It's not great. 
But his his plan is still solid. He's not too difficult to pull off. And you could definitely get some solid bonus hearts going with this guy. Next, we got the Ventriloquist Puppet. The puppet gets a bonus heart for every time they date someone that got rejected the night before. The puppet is a pretty solid character. Uh, nothing too flashy, nothing too fancy. Uh, it's easy to pull off the puppet. He's a pretty simple character who can get a decent amount of hearts. Probably like averaging three, maybe four if you're lucky. Uh, so he's not bad. He's probably, I would consider him a solid B tier. He's pretty strong, not crazy, but you could definitely get some good hearts going on with him. So next up is the vampire. So everyone the vampire dates becomes a vampire, and then so do the people they date. At the end, the original vampire receives half a bonus heart for every vampire in the game. So the vampire is kind of like a safer mummy. They both have really similar effects, except for the fact that if the vampire uh, infects everybody, uh, that there's no negative there. That's just nothing but positive for him. So there's not really the risk that the mummy has. The trade-off is that the vampire doesn't steal the hearts. He just gets bonus hearts. Gets a half a bonus heart for every other vampire in the game. So uh, I would say it's more consistent than the mummy just because it's less risky. He's, a, he's got a solid strategy. As long as you're dating pretty widespread, like I said, it's not too difficult to get everybody infected with these kinds of like spread characters. So I would put him in A tier. I would say he's a pretty solid pick. He's a... He's strong, he's got a reliable strategy, it's not too difficult to pull off, and even if you don't get everybody, you can prob you could get a consistent three bonus hearts for sure. And last but not we <laughs> and last but not last. So last but not least, the witch. Uh, she takes one hair for every new player dated. When the witch gets revealed, they get one bonus heart per collected hair. So the witch is pretty good. The witch has a solid strategy. She's kind of like the ventriloquist puppet in that, you know, she doesn't have a super flashy or crazy strat that's going to get her potentially a ton of hearts. But her strategy could, je could definitely reliably get you at least like three, maybe four bonus hearts. As long as you're able to keep yourself from getting revealed early, she could, she could definitely roll through and get a solid amount of hearts late game. But once she's revealed, you know, obviously there's nothing really you can do from there. You can't really, no other strategy can be played into to get you more bonus hearts. I would say she's right up there with Ventriloquist Puppet and B tier. Uh, so yeah, that's all of the characters in, uh, in Monster Seeking Monster. I think, uh, I think it's a pretty solid list. I feel pretty comfortable with it. But yeah, that is the video. That is my first ever tier list. Might be my last ever tier list. We don't know. But I put way too much thought into this than was probably necessary. Let me know what you think of the tier list. How would you rank these characters? Would you put them differently? I I'm by no means the monster seeking monster expert, so I, I could totally have them in wonky positions. But, uh, you know, let me know. Wh where would you put these characters? How would you do it differently? So anyways, hope you enjoyed. Have a very good day. My word, smash the heck out of that dislike button, y'all. And I'll see you around. Have a good one, everybody.